Good evening. Thank you so much for making time to catch this show. I keep reminding everybody who watches TV, radio starts from 4 to 6, then 6 to 7, we are on both platforms. So a couple of weeks ago, my producer, Priska Rock, I'm sorry Priska, she talked about how the last time she saw an elephant, she was a toddler. I don't mean to embarrass her, but it's, it just paints the picture about where we are at with our wildlife animals. People think that you should do this if you're a tourist or a special occasion, but I challenge you today to take up um, the chance to go see what we have. And today we focus on elephants. I have a fantastic guy in studio. Hi, team. Hi. Wait, do I call you team? It's okay. Jim Karani. This, this, this happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the first time. <laughs> oh my God. You're from Wildlife Direct Legal yes. Affairs. Yeah. Karibu sana. I can tell we'll have a good show. Thank you for having me. So when, when we talk of uh, elephants, how are we doing, realistically speaking? Well, to be honest, uh, as a nation, we're doing uh, pretty okay on making sure that the numbers of elephants bounce back. Okay. As you are aware, um, you know, Africa in general and most countries that have elephants have been undergoing a major problem with elephant poaching. Mm -hmm. um, because as you may know, because of the high uh, value of wildlife trophies and especially elephant ivory okay. in destination markets like China, Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia, Laos, yeah. and all those other countries, okay. um, created this illegal demand for, you know, uh, elephant trophies. Yeah. And as a result now, this poaching has been happening for the last 10 years. Okay. The Great Elephant Census was just done um, mm -hmm. two years ago, mm -hmm. and the results were quite damning. Okay. What it has shown is that Africa in general and countries that have elephants have lost 100,000 elephants in a decade. We have lost a third of our entire population in just one decade. Wow. Because of poaching. Okay. So, and you can understand that poaching is just you, the, the criminality of just killing the animals. Mm -hmm. There's this other thing, this other chain that comes with it. Okay. The moving, the movement of poached ivory from, you know, a country like Congo mm -hmm. or a country like Tanzania or Kenya to all the way to Indonesia yeah. or China. Okay. You know, it takes a lot of uh, effort, work, and industry and organized crime. Mm -hmm. All those things have been destroying our institutions, okay. abetting and aiding and enabling corruption. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to elephants in general in Africa, we've been yeah. losing a lot. Okay. But surprisingly, yes. Kenya has bounced back. Okay, that's Kenya good is to hear. pretty much um, the number one country when it comes to elephant conservation. Okay. We argue a lot between us and Botswana, but still, <laughs> Kenya, number one. I have a feeling Kenyans would not say they're second, they'd say we're first. Of course, of course, of course. And okay. this is why mm -hmm. um, we have one of the populations in Africa that are on the rise okay. because of conservation success in mm -hmm. Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, this has helped the numbers bounce back. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, would you even say how um, the public views the elephants? Has that changed as well? Because I see on Instagram, everybody who's touched an elephant is very sure to, you know, put it on Instagram with all the hashtags and save the elephant. Are we doing well as well in terms of perception? Well, I'll be absolutely honest. Um, when we started off, mm -hmm. um, Wildlife Direct kicked off the hands of our elephants campaign um, in 20, uh, 2012, 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. It was a hard time for you know Kenya in general. Putin was high. Okay. It, it was such a big crisis. Mm -hmm. And remember then, the government in 2013 published a 75-page document saying Putin is not a national disaster. Okay. So we were typically in denial. Mm -hmm. Then what we said is then let us figure out just how bad this is. Okay. So we launched the Hands of Elephants campaign with patroness, the First Lady, Margaret mm -hmm. Kenyatta, yes. who really tried to rally this call to Kenyans and tell them seriously, the thing we think we have mm -hmm. is disappearing in front of our own eyes. Okay. So Kenyans have this myth of superabundance that we have so much wildlife, <laughs> I'll see them when I'm 60 exactly. and 70 and 80. Yeah. So you and Priska are pretty much... Nope, pretty don't put much... me together with Priska. The okay, last sure. time I was there was last year. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. good. So, yeah. so, so Priska, we are dumping all this hate <laughs> on her. She, she is one of those Kenyans who believe the 
these elephants will always be there. Okay. It's not like we believe these elephants are for the wazungus and the mm. foreigners and the mm-hmm. people who come to see them. But mm-hmm. Let's be honest. These animals are part of our heritage. Okay. Look at all Kenyan brands mm-hmm. that call themselves Kenyan brands. Mm. They have the elephant as an icon and as a brand in it. Okay. Most logos have the elephant in there because they recognize the elephant as an epitome of strength, mm-hmm. an epitome of and guys of grace. Mm-hmm. That's why it's in most Instagram photos. And also because it's a lovely creature and very cute and a mammal just like us. Okay, you really love them, don't you? Oh. I can tell the passion as you speak. What I can tell you is someone has to, right? Okay. And then um, the passion comes from the mere fact that um, elephants are some of the most unique iconic creatures out there and mm-hmm. it's not just elephant it goes down all the way actually my favorite my favorite creature is mm-hmm. the gravy zebra it's so beautiful okay and they're only 2500 in kenya mm-hmm. and kenya has like the largest population in the world so we pretty much have something which is so unique and can only be found in kenya and it's part of our heritage which you can't see anywhere else unless in a zoo okay so and then again um Kenya is truly, truly the only place in the world, and especially Amboseli National Park, mm-hmm. where you can see animals truly in the wild, okay. and especially elephants. They are graceful. They eat right by you. They come to you. You'll never <laughs> hear of a, charging, of a charging elephant or a marauding bull mm-hmm. in Amboseli. Okay. Because truly, truly, they get to exhibit their natural, natural instincts, okay. and you can see that for yourself. Okay. Yeah. If everybody was as passionate, we'd have so many of them around. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about conservation as mm. a media, how have we treated that topic? Putting myself in the spotlight uh, here. Well, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are positives of it and negatives of it. Mm-hmm. So the media has been very open to topical issues and topical stories around the elephant. For example, we partnered with another broadcaster in Kenya, mm-hmm. where we published this wild series called Identity Wild Documentary Series, okay. which, reached, which reached 5 million viewers every week. Mm-hmm. What it was able to show is to show Kenyans the magic and the beauty of what they have in their backyards. Okay. Do you know all those Nat Geo videos shot in Kenya that have been shot in Kenya and shown all over the world for decades were never ever shown to our public? Wow. We negotiated with yeah. Na- National Geographic and got into into you know all this um, understandings with them on how we can show this to Kenyans for free. Mm-hmm. And still we started to show them, they were like, oh my God, that's all we had. And then yeah. we tell them, oh, well, we had the, the numbers have gone down a little bit mm-hmm. because it has taken a while before we showed those documentaries. Mm-hmm. Now we are going into a new series where we'll be showing Kenyan conservation heroes. It's not just Sir David uh, Attenborough who knows these things. Okay. Trust me, there are yeah. Kenyans down there yeah. who who are who are down there conserving wild dogs, mm-hmm. zebras, uh, giraffes, mm-hmm. lions, and they are the true conservation heroes. Who, to be honest, this light ought to shine on. Okay. And that's what we intend to do. And of course, that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And yet again, now the negative bit of it. This Here is we where. Go. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, yeah. um, many, many of the media houses have been looking for the clincher, the catchy story, mm-hmm. and the controversial stories. Mm-hmm. For example, you'll see the death of rhinos will get way, way more coverage. We are getting to that. Than, uh-huh. than you know, than uh, say the celebration of the many Kenyan rangers who just got the Paradise Award okay. and that three thousand dollar award mm-hmm. from Jack Ma. Okay. Those things will, will be seen back there in in the newspapers right Page. next to the obituaries. <laughs> and to be honest, these are the yeah. people who are keeping our animals alive. Okay. For example, like tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we we will be burying one of our one of our most iconic um, elephant eaters. Mm-hmm. This lady knows used knew every single elephant in Amboseli by name. Wow! So okay. Ilas Ayalel mm-hmm. unfortunately succumbed to um, cancer just recently, and Sorry we'll be burying her tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We've lost a true matriarch. Her knowledge, her local knowledge of what she knew is gone with her. Okay. She did not have the time to impart it. And you know, like they say. <sighs> 
in Africa when a wise person dies, it's like burning down a library. Mm -hmm. What we have lost, I don't think we'll be able to regain it. Okay. So many of these conservation heroes never, ever, ever get a chance okay. to be heard and to be seen and to be celebrated. Mm -hmm. That's my only problem, the media generally. Here's what we'll do. The next time you'll come with one of them. Oh, great. Yeah. Awesome. Let's awesome. do awesome. that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, let's talk about the importance of conserving these animals. You know, sometimes people think conservation is left to the elite. You know, you have a big ranch in like Kipia, so you should do that, mm. or the government. Mm. But let's just talk about the importance of that. Mm. Now, um, I have to be bluntly honest with you. You remember that thing we were taught in geography? Yeah. Um, Tourism is the number one revenue earner. That still remains true until today. Okay. Tourism, to, uh, wildlife-based tourism accounts to 10% of our GDP. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of money we're bringing into the, mm -hmm. into the GDP. Um, and then, of course, all the benefits that come with it, the job creation, yes. the ecosystem services, mm -hmm. that's a lot. Our animals are part of our heritage. Look at our coat of arms. That yeah, that. yeah. When you go out there mm -hmm. to the entire world, and you're like ten Africans from ten different countries, and yeah. you ask, "What's good in your country?" Mm -hmm. uh, most of us don't say the people. <laughs> uh, most of us don't say the mountains. Okay. Yeah. Tanzanians can go. Yeah, we have Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. We can say you have Mount Kenya, and we yeah. won't much. Mm -hmm. But we say we have our iconic wildlife, some that can't be found in their countries, mm -hmm. and they look at us with these eyes of jealousy. And let's be absolutely honest. Mm -hmm. We are very beautiful people. We have amazing cultures, but mm -hmm. tourists don't come to see us. Please don't be modest. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so they they come to see our wildlife okay. mainly because they don't have wildlife in their countries, mm -hmm. and none of them are, you know, as peaceful and graceful. Mm -hmm and easy to spot as in Kenya. Okay. Yeah. You know, the other day we took a trip to, we must, where are we headed? Nakuru. Oh. And we'd see animals just everywhere. And I thought, my goodness, how many times do you just drive away and just explore Kenya as yeah, we have true. it? How do we instill this from a younger age so that we don't have these con uh, conversations when we're already in the red with the animals? Well, let me interest you with this. Mm -hmm. um, at Wildlife Direct, we we have this outreach and education program where okay. we have really worked so hard to integrate children at a very young age mm -hmm. through citizen science projects. Maybe your child is very good at photography, mm -hmm. right? Then take them out there to the bush and they take photography of animals. Maybe okay. your child is very good at math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they're going to count the animals for us. <laughs> Maybe your child is interested a lot with, say, design. Mm -hmm. oh. Bidding around wildlife, bidding around wildlife, uh, wildlife themes is mm -hmm. is actually very catchy. Okay. Right now, you've seen African beads are making a lot of money. Yes. And all I can tell you for sure, for sure, is you get them young. Mm -hmm. That's the best time. You get them invigorated and energized and inspired to act and conserve wildlife mm -hmm. when they're young. I, when we go to the older folk, they go like, yeah, but this is Kenya. It's yeah. going to disappear. Yes. What are you saying? Those animals are like, keep here. Someone mm. else is getting the money. And we go like, but you're missing the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. They are holding those wildlife in trust for us. Okay. Our children's children. Mm -hmm. And as you may know, all these elephants are not ours. We have borrowed them from our kids. They're my kids. That is so true. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think people understand that. I was saying on radio earlier mm -hmm. that... Um, you, you might start telling your great-grandchildren, so we used to have an animal called an elephant. This is what it looked like, and all you have is a photo of it. And okay. I think we don't understand that. So for the grown-ups, what do we do with them? Well, the grown-ups just have to be incentivized. The grown-ups, okay. um, to be honest, the grown-ups are too far lost. They mm -hmm. only believe in commerce. Okay. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Wildlife conservation has been made so interesting to allow... Kenyans to come and get into it as okay. a, from a wildlife conservation point of view. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that if if I just have zebras on my shamba that all of a sudden <laughs> tourists will come, but yeah. enriching the entire thing so it can be, you know, more attractive mm -hmm. to tourists okay. can give you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We've seen the numbers of tourists increase over time after the elections, after yeah. all the security issues we've had. Mm -hmm. Kenyan is rebounding. Look at what brand Kenya is doing, yes. selling Kenya out there. Mm -hmm. We don't go there saying, we have 42 tribes. <laughs> no, no, we go there saying, you can come and see all the big five yeah. and be one hour away from the beach mm -hmm. or be one hour away from the mountain. Okay. So all this come 
as a bundle package. Mm-hmm. But trust me, the basic foundation of it is purely wildlife. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure, let me tell you, people are so quiet today. They're just listening and taking notes. Every, so. <laughs> there's a lady who watches this show every day. She told me, every time I catch this show, I think mm-hmm. about my life because all I see is what I can do better. Mm-hmm. So let me understand. G- At least I didn't say to you. <laughs> It's okay. What are some of the challenges you're facing even as you fight for the elephants? Well, the, the challenges are many. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll just pick the, the top four challenges that we have. Mm-hmm. One, human wildlife conflict. Okay. That is incredible right now. And it's the number one reason why we're losing more wildlife, mm-hmm. even more than poaching. Okay. As you are aware, one of our main successes was reducing poaching by 85%, especially elephant poaching. Mm-hmm. Like I told you, the elephants are coming up. Yes. But something else that is also happening is the habitats that the elephants used to enjoy previously mm-hmm. have now shrunk. Okay. For example, look at Nairobi National Park, shrunk. Amboseli National Park, shrunk. Uh, Savo, shrunk. New road going through it. Railway went through it, shrunk. And so, then they come to us, then we start crying out. Exactly. But, okay. And mm-hmm. then look at it, change of land use. Okay. Places where elephants used to go through. I come from Meru, mm-hmm. and um, I come from Meru, and I've seen this. Um, this primary school I went to mm-hmm. was right next to an elephant corridor. The entire corridor was taken over by farmers who planted maize. Literally maize, the one thing that the elephant loves a lot. Exactly. And potatoes, right? Okay. So uh, they'll just walk through. It's, <laughs> It's pretty much like you've been allowed to lunchtime to pass through a free buffet. Okay. Of course you're going to pick something. Yes. And then you need to understand that this is what we call environmental justice. This mm-hmm. is where the cost of something is borne by someone else and the benefits are taken to someone else. Okay. Seriously, as we speak right now, mm-hmm. the true cost of conservation is being borne by communities that live within and along wildlife parks. Okay. And the benefits are not coming to them. The benefits are going to the exchequer, like I told you. That narrative well, is so familiar. It's mm-hmm. true. It's true. It's familiar, yeah. right? Yeah. But now it's it is so pervasive in wildlife conservation. Right? Mm-hmm. It's mind boggling. Okay. Here, I mean, we have this thing that's contributing ten percent of the GDP. I was just looking into the appropriations bill that was passed by the president, yes, uh, president this year, mm-hmm. which is approving a two point seven trillion budget. Do you know how much money went to conservation? How much? Three billion shillings. One, two, three billion shillings. That's even less than that That's how than much the government gives, and yeah. then the other three billion comes from foreign aid. Now, this is where you need, we need to put this into context. Mm-hmm. You do remember the cabinet secretary saying that uh, Kenya Wildlife Service is being undermined, and he is absolutely right. Okay. The government has looked the other way when it comes to KWS. Mm-hmm. The National Police Service, mm-hmm. fully funded. Yes. KDF, mm-hmm. fully funded. You'll never see an NGO go to KDF. Yep. But KWS, on the other hand, nothing. Okay. KWS doesn't have money currently as we speak to fully compensate everybody who is losing property, who is who are losing lives. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have to fully compensate them on time. Okay. If if an elephant comes on our shamba, to be honest, we, an area where it used to be Kitambo, right? mm-hmm. a preneri it used to go all the time, right? Mm-hmm. And it runs over my grandma. I'll be pissed. I'll be so annoyed. God forbid. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll be so annoyed. That's mm-hmm. the real life for people who live yeah. down there. Mm-hmm. And then um, KWS don't come to compensate or don't even come to to you know to follow up on it yeah. of course i'll chase the elephant and kill it okay retaliatory killings are very common you mm-hmm. saw what happened in meru two months ago yeah villagers ate an elephant mm-hmm. ate an elephant i am disturbed by the mere fact that a line is all that divides between life and, and death, death for yeah. wildlife mm-hmm. for wildlife that don't even know that fence exists for what reason Okay. Now, elephants are getting smarter and smarter. Mm-hmm. They are evading the defenses. Mm-hmm. Many of them are pushing down the fences. Okay. Many of them are crawling under fences. I've mm-hmm. seen videos on YouTube them do that. Yeah. So human wildlife conflict needs to be looked into, seriously. Mm-hmm. Look into big cats, uh, pastoralist co- conflict. This is where people are herding uh, cattle and a lion takes yeah. one cow. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying that their cow is worthless, mm-hmm. but I'm saying their cow has a value. Let's say 100,000 shillings. Yes. Now, do you think a lion is worth 100,000 shillings? No, I think it's priceless because at some point you're going to start looking for them and you won't find them. Exactly. So you see, at that point, 
the cow being eaten by the lion, the farmer is not distraught that he's lost a family member. Mm -hmm. The farmer is distraught that they've lost what? A An, cow. A cow and a livelihood. Mm -hmm. What they want back is to be restituted to the livelihood they had. Mm -hmm. Now, let me switch back to elephants. Elephants are pervasive crop raiders. Mm -hmm. It will wait. My watermelon plantation is almost <laughs> ready. They love watermelons. I've seen yes. them eat them. They love them. Mm -hmm. It's like me and crisps. Uh -huh. They love them. Okay. So they walk into there and destroy everything. A farmer who has worked for months, that's their livelihood, mm -hmm. gone in a flash. Mm -hmm. At that point, that, that farmer needs the reassurance that A, they're going to be restituted. Okay. And then B, that something is going to be done, that that thing does not occur. Mm -hmm. But those two things are not happening because KWS does not have the capacity to do that. Okay. Now that comes to my second question. Mm -hmm. Gross underfunding of wildlife conservation um, agencies, especially KWS. Yeah. I won't touch into KFS. Mm -hmm. I'll just touch into KWS itself. Okay. Um, you may have seen um, uh, reports that KWS rerouted 2 billion shillings meant to buy more and to increase the Nairobi National Park to mm -hmm. compensate for the loss of the Southern Bypass yep. and the railway. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see that, what does that tell you? It tells you that this organization is not getting enough money to do its basic. Exactly. It's basic. They're just paying out people. Yeah, they, yeah. Are, they are paying salaries. Because yeah. at that point, I as a manager have to ask myself, I have, I have this kit of mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. and I'm being asked, to do something for conservation mm -hmm. or to pay my employees right now who are doing something for conservation. Okay. I'll pay employees. Mm -hmm. But what I'm currently saying to everybody is I am not getting the money I need. Mm -hmm. When you see KWS rely on WWF to yeah. uh, to relocate mm -hmm. uh, rhinos, when it should only purely be done by KWS, mm -hmm. you don't see KDF asking an NGO to airlift tanks from Nairobi <laughs> to somewhere else. Yeah. No, you don't see that. Yeah. And now, bar tanks. We are talking of now animals that, for, for lack of a better pun, actually are built like tanks. Yes. Rhinos are some of our most delicate and sensitive creatures. Mm -hmm. We have to lose 11 of them. And then another four in Puchin incidents, three in Meru and one in Lake, Nak in Lake Nakuru. Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking knowing that we, we have worked so hard mm -hmm. to show the world that we can actually take care of these things. Jim, let me ask you, when you have the government not funding KWS, mm. is it ignorance? Mm. Is it not caring? Or for lack of a better word, is it greed? Um, <laughs> I, I am a bit I'll too attached. I'll tell you attached. this. I'll yes. tell you this. Mm -hmm. The same page where I read um, uh, wildlife conservation and management was given three billion. Mm -hmm. The same, same page, yeah. right below it. Mm -hmm. Youth Affairs, NYS, was given 13 billion shillings. Okay. Wait for it. It's okay. I promise you, we'll have this so, conversation. So you Wait see, for it. You see yeah. 3 billion shillings coming to conservation is a joke. Mm -hmm. this, this, it's, it's a joke in, when it comes to appropriations. Okay. I think that's the, the amount of money we've lost between today, 8 and 10. I want to think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the big one case currently before on any anti-corruption course. It has more money than we dedicate to conservation. Yeah. That is a joke. Mm -hmm. We can't be out there saying animals are our best heritage when we're not giving them a single cent. Okay. And then again, I think misplaced priorities. Mm -hmm. It's my third problem. Mm -hmm. You find out right now, the Cabinet Secretary has set up a task force to look into consumptive utilization. It is a very, how can I say, very sweet term that yes. makes you think that, hey, this, this has to be good. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have consumptively utilized sugar before. I know it's <laughs> nice. It's, it's a horrible term yeah. which will start something very, very horrible. Okay. Ideally, they're experimenting with these ideas. One of the questions, the questionnaires that be sent by the task force is, do you think the consumption of wildlife will change food security in this country? Now, I'm looking at uh, President Kenyatta's big four pillars, and food security is one of them. Unless there is a wild strain of maize in the forest that we do not know of, yes. then they are speaking of wildlife as meat. We are not stupid. It's wildlife as meat. Yeah. Currently, we don't know how many zebras we have in this country. Exactly. We can't tell you for sure. Yeah. So here we are deciding to eat this thing when we have squeezed every single dollar from this resource. Okay. From agriculture, it's tourism. And mm -hmm. agriculture, because everybody almost does it. Mm -hmm. 
But now think about it this way. The golden goose has given us 10% of GDP in this egg. Mm -hmm. But we were looking at this golden goose and going like, I pluck its feathers, it's time we ate it. Yeah. I think that's misplaced. Every single meeting I have gone and every single meeting our, our organization has been represented, mm -hmm. a very firm no has come out. Okay. There are things in Kenya that can be consumptively utilized as food. Crickets, I've seen that. Grasshoppers, mm -hmm. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. I've but we can't feed the entire places. country with grasshoppers. Exactly. That's a joke. Yeah. We need to be very serious. We need to concentrate on preservation, putting our money where our mouth is, mm -hmm. putting KWS at the forefront mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you are our wildlife service. Here's the money to allow you to provide that service. Okay. Otherwise, until then, it will just be purely lip service. Jim, do people understand what you're saying? That there are people somewhere seated probably earning a certain allowance to come up with um, what animals, wildlife we should actually eat. That's what you're saying. All I'm telling you is this. In our wildlife act, as of law today, there are 21 species that can be traded. Okay. And by this, there are plants, mm -hmm. there are birds, and there's now purely animals. Okay. In there, there are crocodiles, ostriches, mm -hmm. frogs, reptiles, lizards, and snakes, mostly for venom, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what we're seeing and what I'm preempting and what I can preempt is they're looking at expanding that list to accommodate other animals that, that Kenya can eat, other plants that Kenya can utilize, okay. other birds that Kenyans can eat or use. Mm -hmm. Now, by cultural reasons, I don't see why we need to trade that. Okay. We should be putting that money in livestock production, exactly. pigs, chicken. Exactly, like have we exhausted chicken. all those ideas? We should be channeling. My grandma should be incentivized and given a stimulus package to, to have more chicken, yeah. not to bring a zebra okay. in there. And let's be honest. Do you know anybody in your family who farms or has wildlife on their land? Nope. Okay. Now, let me shock you. 20% mm -hmm. of all wildlife in Kenya mm -hmm. is in national parks. The okay. other 80 is in conservancies, okay. community land, mm -hmm. ranches. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is if you don't know anybody in your family who's doing that, yes. that means no one in your family will ever benefit <laughs> from that, unless they're in tourism. And I'm being yes. absolutely honest with you. That's unless, true. And then unless it comes to your table as... Yeah. As meat. Now, mm -hmm. I monitor wildlife crime in the entire country. I visit courtrooms everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've now done an analysis of around 957 cases relating to around 1,900 people mm -hmm. who have committed various wildlife crimes all over. Okay. Most of them are bushmeat uh, offenders. Yeah? Okay. So most of them are laundering this meat, giraffe meat, zebra meat, mm -hmm. eland meat, as beef. They're not even selling as an exotic Thing. It's beef. It comes it's to your table as beef. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we need to first make sure yeah. that we preserve and conserve our wildlife. Mm -hmm. Now, eating them, there's no big difference okay. between us and that guy. I it's agree. just that we now have a license. Okay. Let me tell you, I'm so sad by that story, but it's okay. Uh, when we have human encroachment into where um, wild animals are or wildlife mm. are, mm. who's to blame? Because I see these stories and I'm thinking, is the animal wrong for crossing over for what seems natural? Is it the human being who built a house? Who's in the wrong? You see, um, I'll use the example of the Nairobi National Park. Okay. It's a prime example of Something we really love mm -hmm. out there, but when you come to practical reality, mm -hmm. we really, really seem to hate. Okay. Let's be absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. um, the Nairobi National Park is slowly and slowly being choked. Now, um, a scientist um, called uh, Dr. Gutu has done studies on this and has shown the decline yeah. and the decline and the dying of the Nairobi National Park. When mm -hmm. we go out there, we say this is the only, the only city in the world with a national park, <laughs> with a railway cutting through it yes. and a bypass cutting through it. Mm -hmm. and now, let me allow you to shock that the biodiversity loss is so much. Mm -hmm. and let me show you with real examples why this is horrible. You've used the Southern Bypass, haven't you? Yes. Now, as you drive towards Ole Sereni, I won't even ask how Ole Sereni got that land. That's another story. Let's not have that discussion. Yeah, that's uh -huh. another story. Okay. Now, 
as you drive towards the Nairobi National Park, you get mm -hmm. to a place where you carve out towards Wilson. You carve out, then you carve in. There's a piece of land right there. Yes. Do you know that is still part of the National Park? Me and you know that is zero biodiversity loss. It is just <laughs> waiting for someone to build something there. Jim, I don't want us to be arrested no, no, after no, this, but no, go no, ahead. For real, yes. for real. Yes. That's the truth. Okay. Every time you, I pass through there, I look at it and I ask myself, hmm. 100% biodiversity loss there. Okay. Towards the south of the park where mm -hmm. Nairobi National Park previously used to have ecosystem access with the Amboseli ecosystem mm -hmm. where animals could clearly move up and down. Yes. Now Nairobi National Park is just a big zoo just becoming smaller and smaller with all those private developers who have taken over land to the south of the park. I like your choice of words. Now, <laughs> I'll be very clear. Yeah. When the railway was built, mm -hmm. we were told don't worry, it happened a Jew, it will shoot. It was made so technical and so easy for us to feel like it's something nice. Okay. It will shoot, go on top, and then, and, the animals. and then we are going to give you money that will buy you 10 times the amount of land mm -hmm. uh, we have used. Okay. The same was said about the Southern Bypass. Yes. The same is saying, being said about the 4.1 kilometer road coming from the ICD, mm -hmm. which is the inter internal container depot at uh, the Southern, uh, at the SGR yes. coming to the Southern Bypass. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know all that money was given to KWS and KWS took it where? Salaries. Compensation. So now, we need to ask this question. Mm -hmm. Where will you get the money now to buy, as we had thought previously, mm -hmm. more land to the Southern Bypass? Okay. Those questions are not being, those questions are not getting answers. Mm -hmm. And I'm not asking those questions now. It's just for you to think about. The more and more we keep on developing inside the parks without increasing the conservation value of those parks, mm -hmm. we are decreasing areas viable for our wildlife species to exist in. I don't, I'm not a scientist, but it's quite clear for me to see it's that. It's common sense. It is truly common sense. Mm -hmm. um, you've seen photos of where there was this lion under the railway. Yes, I being saw that. Ran over. Oh my God, yes, you've I seen, saw that. You've seen elephants try and to sneak on top of the of the of the bypass yeah you've seen of the train itself mm -hmm. yeah they're yeah. photos like those mm -hmm. those are not photoshopped elephants are trying to figure out their routes okay much of the railway in as much as they have really tried to make those underpasses mm -hmm. those underpasses have not been very consistent you'll see they're very few and far between yes again so wildlife corridors have been mm -hmm. cut mm -hmm. which means wildlife can go up and down mm -hmm. as they used to jim let me ask you this if mm -hmm. you had if they took a bit of the nairobi national park but then they gave you uh, some other land elsewhere will that be better no well some other land elsewhere you mm -hmm. know you know it's not you know resettling people yes you know, it, it's your, it's new conservation space. Okay. The argument I had, which people did not like, was a lot of the property mm -hmm. to the north of the National Park, Nairobi mm -hmm. National Park, is in Dongo's report as land that has been stolen. The report now, that they refused to now, accept. Yes. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. They endorsed it. They mm -hmm. took it. It was way back then. It was just shelved, lying, unimplemented. Yeah. You have so many reports like this. Let mm -hmm. me stick to Ndongo's report. You've been to Wilson. Mm -hmm. If you take off the bar, you land in someone's bedroom. <laughs> because clearly, how is someone two feet from the airport? Okay. You were not stupid. Yeah. Someone has stolen land. Mm -hmm. But it has been laundered over time as if it's something real. Okay. But now, the question I was having is, okay, fine. I understand developing into parks is nothing new. Mm -hmm. These things happen. We build tents in parks, so it's not a big deal. The question should be now, why don't we fast? take the grab land, eh? mm -hmm. we put it to good use or whatever use we want to do, mm -hmm. then when we are done with all the grab land, we can come to this virgin natural park land. Okay. That land has laid untouched since when that palace was declared or since when that part was a national park. Okay. For years, mm -hmm. Nairobi National Park was the first national park in this country. <laughs> We're jokers. <laughs> We're just jokers. Okay. Jim, you look so frustrated. I am, because you see, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I am in court following up cases against the Standard Gauge Railway mm -hmm. um, and in relation challenging why it's there, okay. right? And w whether it was built um, with an environmental impact assessment study being done and a license. Mm -hmm. As I'm doing that, mm -hmm. the railway is being built. So to <laughs> me, my, the case which I'm sat in, that I went to law school for over nine years for, is purely an academic exercise. That's the country I live in. So, Jim, I have a question. <clears throat> and I put you in the one, you know the one is? 
it. But why are we losing rhinos? Why do we have 10 rhinos, 11 rhinos dying? And then we have reports much later. And um, I liked how you challenged me and said, media talks about the death. What's been done? Wow. Um, so I'm hoping this is the last time okay. a Kenyan is asked about uh, the rhinos. Mm -hmm. This is the yeah, unfortunate problem. Breathe, Jim. Um, Breathe. Yeah, to be honest, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not being careful with my words. I'm okay. just being absolutely honest with this mm -hmm. issue. But then... Uh, Management principles, breakdown of structure, and like I told you, um, that breakdown of structure leads to the loss of 11 rhinos. Mm -hmm. People are suspended, which is okay. But now the question should be, mm -hmm. suspension is not enough. You know the Kenyan thing of step aside, suspended. Well, we carry out the investigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we carry out the investigation, the investigations are back. Mm -hmm. There was negligence. Mm -hmm. Now the next question we need to ask ourselves. Is it it's not serious. Yeah. Absolutely criminal negligence. Mm -hmm. Then we need to go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Who should have done their job and they didn't do their job? Okay. Is it a criminal? Yes mm -hmm. or no? But now, the funniest thing is, there is no offense in the Wildlife Act called the killing of animals. Okay. So we have the possession of wildlife trophies, mm -hmm. which can subject you to a minimum of five years imprisonment and one million shilling fine. Mm -hmm. And it can be enhanced up to life imprisonment or 20 million shillings. Okay. But then the killing of wildlife, nothing. Okay. Now the beauty is mm -hmm. uh, the cabinet secretary and through the ministry and the state department of wildlife have pushed amendments to make sure that the, that the killing of wildlife now mm -hmm. is an offense. So if right now these guys, these guys who have had this criminal negligence that yes. led to the loss of 11 rhinos mm -hmm. will be subjected to the penal code, which is like that law that was left by the Mzungu. Yeah. Which is the same law we used like when I kill your donkey. <laughs> so the penalty is way low. Okay. And I have to be absolutely honest, mm -hmm. we haven't been very serious about that. Mm -hmm. I honestly believe as a lawyer, that's criminal negligence. Okay. If none of them will be charged this year, I'll be ridiculously disappointed. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. It's about figuring out what went wrong and making sure that that doesn't happen. Okay. So in short, we're talking about deterrence. And deterrence works in two ways. Yes. One, you punish this person. Exactly. So that's how it works. Yeah. That's, what the, that's what the law is. Mm -hmm. And that should be the next step. Mm -hmm. The next reasonable step. Okay. We're not just happy with suspension, termination with benefits. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Criminal negligence. And do your time. Do your time. Mm -hmm. Go to court, defend yourself. But in all fairness, that ought to be the next step. Okay. Yeah. I promise not to ask you that question again. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you about the average age of the people you encounter in conservation, be it from the highest top of the office to the people we have as the rangers. Mm. And you said young people are not in there. Well, <laughs> I will say that for most fields. But young conservation, by age, not young politically. By age. True, yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. Yes. I will say that mm -hmm. even in politics, young people are not that many. Yeah. So um, what all I can say is um, you will see the youth are only brought in when you want us to dance, uh, picket, sign petitions, mm -hmm. or, you know, just be busy bodies behind you in a press conference. Right? Yes. But involving young people in leadership like i um, um i'm lucky enough to have been put in a leadership position okay. by by dr paula kohumbu as the ceo of wildlife direct mm -hmm. and with that i've been empowered enough to go around all the courts and do the work that i do mm -hmm. and i know when young people see that they see okay this is a young person being allowed to be in a serious leadership position. Yes. And this has been echoed. The judiciary have fully accepted us and saying, okay, fine, young people have something to bring to the table beyond mm -hmm. just dancing <laughs> and picketing. Have you danced, Jim? I have a lot previously <laughs> until someone had faith in me. But now okay. here's the thing. Yeah. Um, decision making is not a monopoly of mm -hmm. the old people. Okay. And being an elder and being old is, does not mean you're wise.
mm-hmm. or visionaries in what they do. Look at Richard Turere, um, mm-hmm. a young Maasai who created uh, Lion Lights. Um, yeah. Uh, look at all these young people who are heading organizations everywhere. Look at Peter Moore with Stand Up Shout Out. Amazing thing that's mm-hmm. going all over the country. Yeah. You know, awakening the conservation consciousness of mm-hmm. Kenyans and especially young people. Because have you seen our, our median age in Kenya? My goodness, we are 24. If Kenya, if Kenya right now is a person, yeah. it will be 24 years old, because that's mm-hmm. who we are. We're a very young population. The entire Africa, we are way, 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 our median age is way less than 30. Okay. So it's time we absorbed the young people into positions of leadership. So mm-hmm. they themselves can have a try, and they themselves can have ownership in what they do. Okay. Until then, we'll just be believing this, that, uh, uh, you know, ca- and it will pretty much be like that forever. Okay. Yeah. Clearly. You're here to leave me depressed. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, but but here's the truth, though. Okay. Many of the people in conservation are mm-hmm. 50, 60 in I leadership even position. I express that. That shows you even where my thinking is. Because I said, I, th- I thought you'd be quite older. But thank God you're no, here. No, here's the thing. Look at the lifespan of men. 74. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Women, 78. So that means in the next two decades, most of them will be dead. So now here they are making decisions for me. For me, who will be way alive for the next, then, if I'm praying to God, the next 40 <laughs> to 50 years. Yeah. So they should be consulting us and going like, most of them are not even on Twitter. They don't understand what it is. Most of them don't even understand our communication platforms. Mm-hmm. Most of them cannot speak to the youth correctly. They okay. don't understand how to connect with them. Mm-hmm. And they still expect us to save the same animals. We need to put our face. The same way we've been saying that African solutions should be solved by Africans, Yes. then youth problems should be solved also by the youth. Okay. I have a question for you off air. Cool. Uh, so let me let me talk about the rangers. And for me, when we see them in photos and in videos, are they paid well, Jim? To be honest, um, um, they do the bulk of the work, mm-hmm. as you may know, but they are not taken care well. Um, I would love I would love if you look into their welfare. Okay. Their welfare is, is is really not that good. I have to be absolutely honest. Um, okay. And lack of funds or and then just lack, purely, like mm-hmm. I told you, capacity yeah. issue, right? Um, money. If you're doing out and out law enforcement, asked you, you will never see KDF underfunded yeah. or NPS underfunded, mm-hmm. but you will see KWS seriously underfunded. Mm-hmm. The first thing they will go for is tier level people. Uh, the lower you are, the lower money you'll get. Okay. We have rangers earning 16,000 shillings a month, and then here they are in parks, around national parks, in gross danger. The, thin, the, green, thin line, the green line says, yeah. the Green Line Foundation has been telling us mm-hmm. over 1,000 rangers have lost their lives. Mm-hmm. Let me even, in the last decade, yeah. just protecting wildlife, let mm-hmm. me bring this back home. A very youthful female ranger was shot in one of the cases I was dealing with, affecting an arrest. She was shot in her stomach, and eight months later, she was back to her work. I was asking her, what is wrong with you? And she told me, man, the dedication I have for this. And yeah. she's youthful. She has another 30, 40, 50 years in her. Okay. Those are the people who should be getting awards, com- commemor- commemorative awards, the yeah. commendation awards from the president. But mm-hmm. it's okay. Here um, we are. Githeri man, sour. Well, let's do that. But let's be absolutely fair. There's a girl, man. Rangers, rangers mm-hmm. are not being properly mm-hmm. recognized. They're okay. not being celebrated. Mm-hmm. Just celebrating them on World Rangers Day, tweeting that you love them, hashtag rangers, is not enough. They need true, proper benefits. Okay. They need job satisfaction. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. Until we take care of them well, mm-hmm. animals will never be safe. Okay. Yeah. Jim, we have to go. We're out of time. Sure. 30 seconds. Last word to the person listening and watching. Well, here's the thing. Um, Things are getting better. Mm-hmm. The conservation consciousness of the country is getting better. Okay. We are moving to greater strides where we are now seeing wildlife conservation as a true benefit to this country. Mm-hmm. Kenyans should not support eating of wildlife. Kenyans should not support the poaching of wildlife. Kenyans should support the positive things. Okay. Selling Kenya as a brand, mm-hmm. taking care of our rangers, taking care of our own. 
And that's the only way we'll make sure that this works. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Oh, Those okay. are difficult conversation made easy. Thank you for that. Um, I hope you've learned something as I have. Thank you so much for watching this show. Monday to Friday, it's been such a good run. We are preparing for next week. Trust me, we are so ready. But for now, have a fantastic weekend. My name is Medrin Yambura. Have a good day.